He is an anti-fraud expert, change maker, and hero maker. Hi everybody, this is Dilly Season, the professional in pajamas, also known as accountant in pajamas. As usual, we will be discussing a very, very important topic for today. This is about the veto of President Duterte on the Tax Amnesty Act. Honestly speaking, I don't agree with him on the veto. You know why? Maybe we can discuss on that one. And let us first discuss uh, the, the background of this law. Okay? So, when I read the law, sometime is in previous months, you know, my instant reaction is, wow, what kind of law is this? What kind of bill is this? You know what? This bill is for tax evaders, for tax cheats, for corrupt people. This favors them. Why? It's because, you know, if you will read the tax amnesty bill, it says there that anybody, a, any individual or company or organization may only pay 2% of assets for them to be immune, for them to be able to keep their information secret, confidential, and at the same time, they will no longer be audited by the BIR. And alternatively, instead of paying 2% of total assets, then they can, or they can also pay 5% of the network. So, for example, if a person or a company has a 10 million network, 5% of that is only 500,000. So, pwede na siya magbayad 500,000. Immune na siya from any lawsuit, immune from any audit, and the information is confidential. So, basically, what is the benefit to them? If you will notice, 10 million multiplied by 30% tax rate or 35% tax rate, that is a total of 3.5 billion. And now, they will only pay 5% of that. And that becomes now 500,000 and they save 3 million. For a person who has a higher net worth, say for example, 100 million times 5% is only 5 million. Instead of the 35 million, which is a possible tax on that net worth, wherever that network or asset came from. So if you will really notice, ang laki ng matitipid ng mga individuals or corporations who have amassed a lot of assets. And at the same time, that is for the previous transactions on which they have already accumulated their net worth or assets. But how about in the future? With this tax amnesty bill, at the end of the day, the person, or the individual, or the company can overstate their assets. When they overstate their assets, whatever accumulation, future accumulation of assets has been in the future is already paid with the 5% tax rate. So it's really something that it's really beneficial for people who are rich or, or who are actually tax evaders, corrupt people. So as far as I'm concerned, honestly speaking, I don't agree on the general tax amnesty, most especially on certain provisions of it. But I congratulate the president and I thank you for the, for the president for the veto. But honestly speaking, I don't agree with him on that veto. Now, let us go first for the reasons for the veto. Number one reason for the veto is because it's overly generous. Sobrang masyadong generous para sa mga taxpayers. Pangalawa, there is no provision for breaking the walls of bank secrecy. Confidential pa rin ang bank information. And take note na for the whole world, halos na dalawa na lang na country ang may bank secrecy law. Philippines and another country. And number three is tax cheats, tax cheats or tax evaders or maybe corrupt people will be protected past and future. And this is the reason why the president has 
uh, vetoed these provisions of the law. Again, I would like to thank the President for acting and I would like to congratulate him for the veto of this tax amnesty law. However, again, as I mentioned to you earlier, I do not agree on the veto. Let us proceed on what is the exact statement by the President as quoted in some newspapers. Without the provisions breaking down the walls of bank secrecy, setting the legal framework for us to comply with international standards, take note of that one, on the exchange of information for tax purposes and safeguarding against those who abuse the amnesty. So, tatlo. Without the provisions breaking down the walls of the bank secrecy, setting the legal framework for us to comply with international standards and exchange of information for tax purposes and safeguarding against those who abuse by declaring untruthful asset or net worth, a general amnesty that is overgenerous and unregulated would create an environment ripe for future tax evasion. The very thing we wish to address, that is according to the President, which is actually, I agree. I agree on that statement. Again, this is another statement that he said. Without these measures, the government and ultimately the Filipino people will incur long-term substantial revenue losses. Again, I agree on that one, but I still disagree with the veto. Why? Let us go to the question why I don't agree with the veto. Let us go back first to the objective. The objective of the tax amnesty is basically to what? Raise funds, about 40 billion, something around that amount. And with the objective, this is the exact statement that you can read from the newspapers. The objectives of an amnesty such as raising revenues and expanding the tax base cannot be fully achieved if we will, if he will, if he had approved that tax amnesty, general tax amnesty. Now, going back to the issue here, the, what is the reason now why, you know, the, the president did not approve is because of the, that those reasons. But there is one thing reason that I would like to share with you why I don't agree with the veto by the president. There is a reason number one. I would like to note that tax amnesty is not Remember, take note of this one. Tax amnesty is not for tax evaders, tax cheats, or corrupt people or organizations. We should never make law for them. That is very clear. As far as I'm concerned, this is my opinion. We should never make law for them. Also, if you will notice from my previous computations earlier on the network, you will see really that the, the, the existing bill is for the tax cheats. And if we, if we will approve, if President Duterte has approved the general tax amnesty, it will be a precedent for legalized corruption. We will now be legalizing the corruption. And again, that will be a law for the tax cheaters or the, for the corrupt people. And if you will notice, as I have been talking about in my previous, you know, videos, previous talks, non-payment of taxes is the worst corruption. And because of that, the effect of the veto actually is tax, tax cheats and tax evaders or corrupt people when president has vetoed the tax amnesty provisions, general tax amnesty provisions that tax evaders are actually not legalized, which means they cannot do anything, you know, uh, bad or they cannot avoid or they cannot evade taxes in the future. So, but basically that is the effect of 
the veto. However, as I mentioned earlier, tax amnesty is not for the tax evaders, tax cheats, and corrupt. And it goes me now to the second reason. Because tax amnesty is for those who are honest. Honest people, honest organizations or companies who have made mistakes in the past. But they are willing to pay, correct their mistakes and pay the right taxes. So at the end of the day, the effect of the veto, honest people, honest organizations, honest companies will no longer be able to pay, will no longer be able to correct, will no longer be able to pay if they are act these people are actually very much willing to pay additional taxes to help the government, they were not given the opportunity to correct it. They are not given the opportunity to correct their mistakes. At, at, and at the same time, the objective to raise funds is not met. And this is basically the reason why I do not agree with the veto. Because the objective to raise funds is not met. So what is the possible solution, resolution, if not to veto? Or if it has been vetoed, what should have been done as a resolution? My opinion is basically the president should have approved the general tax amnesty, but he should have vetoed the line which puts immunity, which puts confidentiality, which puts exemption from audit, which protects the tax cheats and the corrupt people or organizations. And possibly in the IRR of this new law, those who are availing the tax amnesty law or act, they should provide five to 10 years historical information of their network to justify where did their money, their network, their assets came from. So that is basically one of the possible solutions. And you know, one of the reasons is because there is no bank secrecy law, uh, the, the, the easing of the bank secrecy law. My, my, my opinion on that is bank secrecy law, easing of bank secrecy law should be dealt with separately in another law. So at the end of the day, uh, the president did that, but again, this is just my opinion on this veto by the president. So what is the possible effect of my suggestion on the possible resolution? The, the possible effect by approving the general tax amnesty, but having a veto on the immunity, confidentiality, and the exemption from audit is basically it will encourage payments correction by honest taxpayers and then when honest taxpayers will pay the right amount already as a build of the tax amnesty law now the tax cheats will not be protected anymore because they are, will be required to declare the, the historical information where did the, the, the network or assets came from and at the same time the effect of that is we will be able to achieve the objective of raising revenue for our future projects or the present projects of the government. So, if you will compare it side by side with the veto, there is no collection or there is very few collection, but with the general tax amnesty, there will be funds for the collected that we will be able to use for the projects of the present administration. But at the same time, with this possible resolution, to, to delete or to veto specific line items in relation to the immunity, confidentiality, or exemption from tax audit. If that has been vetoed, then uh, the, this tax amnesty could have achieved its objective. So anyway, it's the president, it's the decision of the president. I cannot question that. This is only my opinion. And again, I do not agree with that because of the reasons I have mentioned earlier. This is just an opinion. And I would like to quote a specific statement by the president which I got from the newspaper is, given this, I ask Congress 
to pass another general tax bill that includes the lifting of the bank secrecy for fraud cases. The inclusion of automatic exchange of information and safeguards to ensure that asset or net worth declarations are truthful. This is a very, very good move by the President. However, the ultimate question will be, it will be like this. The ultimate question will be, will a bill be passed which will possibly expose or open the hidden treasures or ill-gotten wealth of some corrupt people or tax cheats or tax evaders? That is now the question. So, as far as I'm concerned, I doubt it that it will be passed. At the end of the day, let us wait and see. And this is just my opinion. You can agree or disagree with me. It's up to you. Again, I would like to thank you for watching. And if you like, my video, our video, like, subscribe, and don't forget to share this video. Thank you very much and good day.